everybody what's up it's your girl bondi blue and i am back for another sisters review y'all so let's go ahead and get into it so the episode starts off with the last one left off which was with andy's receptionist wheeling and gary inside of a large jailhouse laundry bin okay apparently he's being followed by that detective and he wanted to make sure nobody knew that he was going to her place now i don't know how he convinced the receptionist to help him but andy was very upset told the receptionist to get out of her apartment at least 50 11 times she also told gary to get out at least 50 11 times and then gary comes out with a duffel bag of money talking about here it's a hundred thousand dollars take it pay your bills do whatever you need to do with it like I was just like, oh, how about you could have not went into the lawyer's office with your wife with the bull? How about that? That would have been a nice alternative of $100,000. What I'm going to do with that? Okay, but he seems to think he's going to be able to fix this. I said, I'm sure. It sounds to me like you're getting your way. She loses her career and you get to pay for her to be a nice little kept woman. Until you cheat on her next year with whoever the new one going to be. Mm-hmm trying to act like Andy different. Andy says, you must think I'm some whore. He says, no, that's not it. And she says, I'm moving on. I say, Andy, you ain't moving on no damn well. Go on away from me with this. You know you still want that man. That's why you worrying about whether he was on his wife's side or not. Girl, stop. She tells him that she's going on a date with Morris. I said, for what? Why? Why did you have to say that? You just lost your job. Why are you going out on a date with the guy that helped that happen? Like, somebody explain this to me why she thought this was a good idea. Not Gary got to be the good guy, even though we keep seeing these little speckles of crazy in him. But he's a good guy now. So he tells her he doesn't think it's a good idea for her to go out with Morris. Child, we could have told you that. All right, he got a side part. What are we going to do with him in his side part? Okay? Uh-uh. Andy doesn't care about Gary not liking her going out with Morris, okay? She's doing it. I said, girl, you need to grow the hell up. Gary keeps trying to convince her it's not a good idea, and then he calls her Jasmine. And she says, what did you call me? I said, how long did it, it, did it take you to realize that he just called you Jasmine? Because <laughs> it took her a minute to get that out. Then she screams, get the hell out of here. Like all abruptly and everything. I was like, see what I be talking about, y'all? Why is the acting so, uh, 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 uh. Like, whoo, Lord. So Andy screams for Fatima, the receptionist, to come in and get him before she calls the police. He not really trying to leave. But Fatima's like, boy, if you don't come on, okay? And Andy says, I'm going to call the cops if you don't get out of here okay you know we gotta have this repetitive ass dialogue over and over and over again okay he gets into the laundry basket and she's wheeling it out the door and fatima turns around to apologize to andy and andy says fatima if you ever do anything like that again you will never work for another lawyer in this city again I said, girl, you just got fired and you might get this bored. Like, what power you got to say who can work well? Stop. Stop. Fatima all sorry and scared and all of that. I said, girl, you know what Uh-uh. Then Andy calls Morris and tells him to meet her down at the bar. It's now or never. I said, girl, <laughs> if you don't get out of here with the Maya lyrics, I don't have time for this. So Sabrina is blowing up calvin's phone trying to get him to talk to her but you know he's still upset about her trying to set him up for the threesome and he's sitting somewhere in a gaudy ass shirt with not nearly enough of the buttons buttoned okay and he calls her back and tells her to stop calling him he doesn't want to talk to her he doesn't want to see her ever again and she's sitting on the phone begging oh please calvin will you please hear me out will you please talk to me calvin no i don't want anything to do with you why do you have all this venom in your voice for me oh my god God. you know i was just kind of like really sabrina really you gonna beg him even though you don't like the fact that he wears lace underwear and put your dildo up his bum like make me understand why you running behind this man let somebody else have this man Maurice comes into her office to ask her what's going on. She says nothing. Stay out of it, Maurice. <sighs> and then she sits there and cries. Sure. Cry me a river, Sabrina. Then Maurice gets a call on his cell phone from that same aggy, lame-ass dude from last week who Sabrina gave Maurice's phone number when he was really trying to get hers. Remember the one with the $800,000 check he was so proud of? Yeah, him. So he's in his car on the phone with Maurice, and Maurice is like, who is this? Oh, she must have gave you my number. You know that she gave him your number. 
And he's like, oh, so she's into playing games, huh? And he was like, I guess so. But you know, I'm flirting with you. And he was like, oh yeah, you flirting with me? Well, I guess you could say I'm flirting with you. I said, oh really? Okay, now they done made a date and they gonna go out to the club together, okay? To the drag club, to the drag show after work. And I'm just sitting up here like, why are you trying to go out with somebody who didn't even know that it was your number they were calling Maurice? Why are you acting so thirsty? Like, I just, I don't feel safe with this at all. That man seemed crazy. And he was lame as hell. So, if, if Sabrina don't want him, then Maurice damn sure shouldn't want him. But see, he thirsty. Because he's so wanting of love and affection and you know all of these men but you ain't dating none of them but you gonna you know this old crazy ass dude that's got a wife and all of that you, you really want those stress troubles okay okay Zanny calls Karen and asks if she knows where Zach is. I am tired of Danny being Zach's spokesperson. I'm over that, for real. Let it go. Karen doesn't have room in her brain to deal with Zach and wherever he may be right now. Danny forgot about the lady blowing her brains out at her salon, I guess, child. I don't know. But Danny says that Karen should talk to Zach. When Danny and Karen get off the phone, Andy calls Karen, okay? Erin is having her apartment cleaned and she prejudged him and all of this. And Andy is like, oh really, so what about Zach? And Karen is like, what about him? Uh, she is over Zach at this point. Andy tells her about Gary and her date with Morris. And Karen says, that sounds like way too much. And Andy was like, I know you're not talking about too much, okay? With your preacher over there getting your apartment clean while you waiting for your old man to come home. <laughs> I said, well, you know, everybody's got a lot going on right now. But at the end of the day, like, Karen is just over this whole situation with Zach. If he can't act right, she don't have the energy to worry about it. And Andy, you are doing too much, sis. You just lost your job. Why don't you stay your ass at home and watch reruns of Living Single on Hulu and eat ice cream like regular depressed people? Going out on dates with sociopaths that's trying to rape you in a parking lot. Uh-uh. We gonna get to it. So Danny finds Zach cleaning the plane, okay? He took a shift for somebody since he ain't got nowhere to stay. So instead of going down to the shelter at the end of the day, he's decided to just work a dump. Danny tells him, begs him over and over again to go talk to Karen. Y'all love each other. Y'all should be together. Just tell her the truth about Helena. That's your key to get back in. And he's just like, I don't want to deal with that. No, she's talking to that guy. No. Like, it's obnoxious as hell to watch Danny keep trying to make Zach go back to Karen. Like, girl, get up out of them people business and worry about where the cowboy then went. Some bitchy white girl comes into the bank and she was Maurice's client, but she went over to Sabrina's window anyway. The bitchy white girl says, I just had to come in and see what you look like. And Sabrina says, why me? And the bitchy white girl says, Exactly. Why you? <laughs> and she walks out. But the check that she deposited had Calvin's name on it. So Sabrina saw that. So she imagined that he must have sent the woman there or the woman must want him or something. So Maurice went through his Instagram and found the woman from three years ago when they went out on a date. I said, now what the hell this got to do with anything? That mean we not letting Calvin go? Because now we got the bitchy white girl coming up in here with the yang, 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 yang. I was just like, this is too much. This is too much. This Calvin storyline needs to be deaded. I'm over it. Maurice tells Sabrina about his date with Alonzo. And then they put on this serious ass music. And Sabrina says that she doesn't know if that's a good idea. Considering the fact that she gave homeboy Maurice's number as a joke. Okay. She says, please let me know when you get home. Okay. And he's like, well, he's going to be on top of me. And she like, come on, please stop playing Maurice. Call me when you get home, okay? And he's like, all right, girl, but I'm going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but you know, you know, I'm going to be like, uh-uh. The whole tone to this is something bad is going to happen to Maurice for going out with crazy-ass Alonzo because Sabrina won't be funny and give Alonzo Maurice number. Ciao. We're going to see where this foolishness go. But I'm not feeling good about it at all. Zach goes to Karen's shop. And I guess he was looking for her there. I don't know why you couldn't call her. Just go back to her apartment. But he goes by the shop first and talks to Pam. 
And he's asking Pam, does she know anything about the woman that killed herself? And Pam was like, no, she ain't never been here before. And so then he asked about Aaron. And at first, Pam didn't know who the hell he was talking about because all he said was light skin. And she was like, oh, you mean a guy that asked Karen out? And he was like, yeah, well, what about him? What you know about him? And Pam was like, nothing. They went out one time. Zach, don't, don't ruin this, okay? Karen loves you and Karen would do anything for you, all right? So don't come over here trying to mess nothing up. And he get all defensive talking about it. You know, I think it's so funny that all y'all women that ain't got no men got a whole bunch of advice to give. But you know, all right, Pam, I'll holler at you later. Like, you asked. Somebody explained to me why the reason why Karen came home, you know, not only because the lady shot herself in the shop, but because she didn't have any clients. Now Pam telling Zach that, oh, please have Karen call because so many people trying to get on the book. I guess they morbid and they want to talk to her. I said, so are they on the book or do they want to talk to her? Do she have clients or don't she have clients, Pam? Tyler, what's happening here, Tyler? I need some continuity here, Tyler. So Karen is talking to Aaron back at the apartment. They finishing up, you know, cleaning up her place. And he asked if he can get her a new TV since he knows her ex won't do it. I guess he's heard enough about Zach's finances to know he can't afford a $400 television. And she says, well, he's actually her current. They just got back together for one day before, you know, they got into the big fight at the hospital. And Erin is like, so was it because, you know, I was kind of crying on your shoulder? And she tries to act like that's not the reason, but he knows that's the reason why. He thanks her for being there for him. And she tells him that he's a good man. And he says he doesn't feel like one right now, but she assures him that he is. And then he thanks her for helping him keep his sobriety. When he gets ready to leave, Zach is at the door with a bonsai tree because they ruined Karen's bonsai tree that she's had since college. She told Danny that over the phone earlier. Aaron tells Zach on the way out the door that he didn't know that they were back together and that they never had sex and that every time they kissed, Karen pulled back. It's a good woman that he has. And Zach is just standing there like, so Aaron just leaves without, you know, incident. And then Zach comes back into the apartment. I said, child, y'all gonna be together or not? Cause I don't know. Andy meets with Morris, okay? And she sits down to have drinks with him. She got this sexy little red dress on and everything. And he's trying to make her drink alcohol, but she doesn't want to drink. He tells her that he's on the bar and he can help her keep her license if she wants him to. Of course she wants him to. But see, it seems as if that's going to cost her more than she's willing to give up. Morris is some type of misogynistic asshole that's also a cokehead. So, you know, that makes him ten times worse. But he tells her that it would be a waste to lose everything over an affair that she made the play and lost. I said, so what he think like she purposefully got with a married man in order to break up their marriage like she doesn't think that's what she did but he thinks that's what she did Andy says I didn't make a play he tells her how the only reason that she does great at her job is because she's TNA so whenever the judges want someone pretty to come in they say oh get TNA on it so that means bringing the titties and the ass okay so the judges only lean her way in court because they want to have sex with her not because she's smart intelligent or worked hard or any of that it's all because of her looks at least that's what Morris has to say while he's sitting there in a tight ass red shirt and a part down his afro i cannot i cannot she gets up to leave and he grabs her and says you know what i'm just trying to tell you the truth and she like oh now you care about the truth because you don't care about the truth when i'm trying to tell you what happened between me and the married man over there but you know whatever he says you know what why don't we go into the bathroom and do a few lines of coke and see how we can you know fix your whole license situation and she says and what if i don't want to go in the bathroom with you he says well it would be a big mistake she says okay well you just go in there ahead of me and i'll meet you in there in a few minutes then she screams loudly for everybody to move and runs out i said child he wasn't even to the bathroom yet and you screaming letting him know you was running out then her car is in valet so somebody didn't parked in front of her car she talking out hey can somebody come move this car can somebody come move this car now i'm thinking just get in your car roll your windows up lock your doors that's all you need to do you know what she does gets in the car has the windows down the doors unlocked and screams for somebody to come and move the car in front of hers while while she's on her phone so she's not paying attention that Morris then walked up behind her car and jumped into the passenger seat and proceeds to try to take the puss from Andy I said 
Now, I don't know how many horror movies I didn't see, but I know that Andy has seen about the same amount as me as a young black woman. You know you're supposed to lock that damn door as soon as you get in that car. You ain't never, ever, ever, ever supposed to jump in your car when you running from a man and not lock the doors and roll the windows up. What was you thinking about? Y'all, I don't even understand, Jesus. And how did Morris think in the land of hashtag me too, you was going to be able to do that to her in the car, in the parking lot, at a crowded club with the two valets coming back and forth? Like, y'all... I don't know whether men are this stupid or Tyler Perry thinks we this stupid. I don't know which one it is. All I know is I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> I ain't got no more for y'all, okay? It's sisters, child, they... <laughs> oh, Lord. It's a roller coaster and I ain't going nowhere. I... <laughs> Lord have mercy. I hope y'all enjoyed the review. I can't say I enjoyed reviewing it, but I hope y'all enjoyed the review. I just, I don't understand, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I love y'all so much. I'll see y'all in the next one.